The 2016 legislative session just began January 11th. What can people expect to see from the legislature this session? Lots of activity. Even though it's a supplemental budget year, and we try to caution folks about the fact that we're here for 60 days only, which goes very quickly, and that we try not to overwhelm the system. We really don't want an introduction of any big new policy bills. What we're supposed to be here doing is kind of fixing any issues that may have happened over the interim, uh, as far as maybe a lack of funding or overabundance of funding for something. Try to make sure that we've got a budget is, is in good shape and we want to get through the next year to the next budget year. Not always the case. I think a lot of people, because it's an election year, like to kind of pass or attempt to introduce bills that send a message um, or are just vitally important to them and they kind of want to get their foot in the door before the budget year. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a flurry of activity. It goes much more quickly than the budget year. Um, but again, we're all very hopeful that we can actually get out of here in 60 days this year uh, and do least harm. What are some of the big issues ahead of the legislature this year? Well, you know, obviously the McCleary decision is kind of the buzzword around here. You know, the courts have made it very clear that they think that we need to adequately fund education. I would submit that we do fund education quite well. Maybe what we're funding is maybe more of the issue. So we've got a lot of really great minds that are sort of digging down deep to find out what can we do to enhance our K-12 system? It isn't necessarily pouring more money into the same system that hasn't yielded or netted good results. We want to return on our investment. We want to make sure that kids are graduating. We want to improve those rates. And maybe the way to do that is kind of look outside the box at other options for kids and, and other ways that children can be educated that will in fact um, help them to obtain family wage jobs when they get out of high school and potentially pursue post-secondary education. The other issue, of course, with education is the charter school issue. The timing on that decision by the courts was really unfortunate. We have the Willow School, for example, in the Walla Walla area. Very excited and passionate people that want to do what they can for some of these kids that might be slipping through the cracks and not really getting much advantage out of our standard educational system that's being provided. I think charter schools are a great idea. I think anything that gets a kid to the finish line is a great idea. And I think that, again, thinking outside of the box, that's exactly what charter schools are trying to do, to address that population of kids that just don't necessarily um, pursue a regular K-12 education. And I think it's a great idea. So one of the issues was common school funding. You know, what, what do you do about using common school funding? The courts have deemed that that's not constitutional. Well, there are other pools of money that we dedicate to education, and one of the unintended consequences of the court's rulings is that our programs like Running Start, our school for the blind, our school for the deaf, those are, those are, um, those are educational venues that we fund with common school money that, in fact, we would probably not be able to fund if in fact the constitutionality is called into question. So again, maybe tapping into other pots of money to kind of stay away from the common school funding might be the answer and hopefully will be the answer to being able to fund some of our, our, uh, our charter schools. Is there any particular legislation you're focusing on this session? Well, yes there is. I've had some good ideas that people approached me with over the interim and one of those ideas um, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. It deals with our kids with disabilities and our families that have a child with a disability. One of the bills that I'm introduced this year is called the Parent to Parent Bill. That's an already existing program in our state that's in 31 counties. And what it basically does is it takes parents, veteran parents, if you will, of a child with a disability who have navigated the system, gone through all of the ins and outs of trying to do that, and now they're able to step up and help some of our young families who have a child with a disability. Sometimes people that have a kid with a disability feel very isolated in a community um, for a number of reasons. And so we think that it's just a great idea to connect those people that, again, have already navigated that system, kind of know how to help them, and frankly can just reach out and be that shoulder to cry on maybe um, for as far as um, you know dealing with the issues with their child with a disability. We think it's a great policy and I'd like to see it enacted across the state. And you know I also really always love to hear from the constituents back home and frankly some of our best ideas, most of our best ideas here 
come from somebody who's encountered some issue with government and or just has a good idea for government. So I hope that people will always feel free to reach out to me in my office, share some of those ideas, share some of your comments about what we're doing, whether you like it or not. We need to hear from you. I like to hear from you and I hope you will take that opportunity to use some of the contact information that's probably on the bottom of the screen right now to contact me anytime. I really appreciate hearing from folks and, and hope you will make sure to do that.